on weaning from ECMO. Can I please have Dr. Venkat Goel, one of the founding members of ECMO Society of India on the dais, please? Also, can I have Dr. Sunil Kumar Puboni, ex-president of ECMO Society of India? Good morning, everyone. We will start the next session. We have three speakers in this session. Myself and Venkata are chairing the session. Uh, the first speaker is uh, Dr. Arpan Chakravarti. You all know Arpan, a close friend and senior consultant, ECMO physician from Medica Super Specialty Hospitals, Calcutta. During the COVID time, he has built up a large database and his center has excelled in the number of cases doing ECMO. Over to you, Arpan. Thank you. So as the confidence is going towards the end, our patients are getting well and uh, we are weaning uh, patients. So <clears throat> I think VV weaning is one of the toughest. Uh, it has been proved toughest after um, COVID. As previously, we, when we are doing ECMO, we used to counsel the relatives. Uh, he will require ECMO for 10 days, 14 days. And this H1N1 came, we started talking about three weeks. Now we are uh, talking about three months. Yesterday, Dr. Ramesh told it is six months. So, what will happen? You know, and the longest winning uh, uh, the world has uh, ever achieved is uh, 605 days. We all uh, read that uh, case study uh, with the toxic fume inhalation. First, V A ECMO, then uh, the uh, this P A uh, pulmonary artery ECMO, then followed by V V ECMO for one and a half years, and then and six months of E cord. Then she came out without transplant. 17 year old, uh, yeah, that was 605 days, that is the highest ever achieved thing. And for that, um, uh, VA ECMO purpose, there is a one year of experience, then uh, got a transplant. So these are the longer ECMO things. But uh, for us, for the regular activities, how we uh, you know, to get that thing on VA ECMO meaning, we know the ventilation, what is our ventilation strategy and why we do ECMO just to prevent those lung injuries uh, uh, followed by ventilator, uh, those ventilator use lung injury and uh, probably uh, go for the lung rest. And ventilator setting we tend to keep as low as possible because in the fear of this pneumothorax, uh, barotrauma and the uh, lot of changes in the lungs which is uh, inflicted by these uh, non-working ventilators at that point of time. So our target is this. I put a big query on this high peep. We don't keep those high peeps nowadays. Initially in H1N1, we used to, we don't come down on the peep. Uh, we kept at 10, 12, sometimes 14 throughout our ECMO run. But uh, we, now we are very much apprehensive to keep that peep more than six. Because if you keep it six to eight, Probably the next day you will find some kind of pneumomedes denum or some kind of the, uh, surgical emphysema or pneumothorax. So we are uh, keeping as low as PIP and uh, uh, keeping this uh, total pressure more, not uh, going more than 25. And obviously the ventilator setting we know as the lung improves, there is an improvement in your tidal volume over a, a, a given pressure and that is known as the lung compliance. And as this lung compliance improves, patients becomes more comfortable and you stop first the paralysis and then the sedation. So this is everyone will uh, uh, follow. And obviously there are some regional variation uh, uh, obviously persist even uh, if we found uh, this era of COVID, two types of ARDS we have seen. One type of ARDS is a central ARDS, but all the, uh, it's white and uh, is a very uh, low compliant lung to start with. And second uh, is the most common part, is a very high lung compliance. Patient is generating 800, 1000 ml tidal volume, is a big uh, uh, breath without any oxygenation and the carbon dioxide too much. And initially those data when they started coming, when he intubated them and there is a drop in this um, uh, tidal volume after uh, taking them on uh, controlled mechanical ventilation, they started having hypotension and they died. So initial experience of these ventilators with these high tidal volume things were not good. And slowly we have learned that this is a kind of uh, a pneumonia which is high compliant lung with very, uh, without any gas exchange. So slowly, slowly we have learned that. And we all know that if we kept this uh, spontaneous breathing uh, in uh, during our ECMO, it preferentially improves the uh, uh, compliant part of the diaphragm and it gives a very uh, 
गुड वेनस विटान मेंटेनिंग का दिस कार्डियक आउटपुट एंड ऑब्वियसली इफ इट रिड्यूसेस द भैप इंसिडेंस एंड विथ इंक्रीजिंग योर स्पॉन्टेनियस ब्रीदिंग वेरी अर्ली वेन द पेशेंट इज नॉट प्रिपेयर इट कैन बी इट कैन इन्फ्लिक्ट सम इंजुरीज लाइक इट कैन इंक्रीज पीसीली द मोर यू टेक टाइडल फॉलो मोर द इंजुरीज हैपनिंग हाई वर्क ऑफ ब्रीदिंग पेशेंट इज टेकिंग ब्रेथ ऑफ सिक्सटी विद ए थर्टी फाइव एम एल टाइडल फॉलो बैट यू आर अलाउिंग दैट दैट विल कॉज मोर लंग को लैब्स एंड मोर वर्सनिंग ऑफ द एक्स रे एंड लॉट ऑफ ट्रेवल शूट्स कैन हैपन दैट कैन रिड्यूज योर प्रेशर दैट कैन कॉज लॉट ऑफ डाउन ग्रेडिंग ऑफ योर एक्मोरान Uh, as we uh, as seen uh, two three lectures on uh, yesterday also regarding the awake ecmo i searched this uh, extensively last night how the awake ecmo in uh, vv ecmo winning is helping us so it has been uh, told two instances these are taken sacrosanct or it is guided by the evidences like two patients one is when you are the patient is waiting for transplant he is going down we put him on ecmo and fetching for the lung those patients are better with awake ecmo and second one is the patients who are immunocompromised like a, a hiv patient who is down with your um, uh, this p uh, pneumocystis carinii pneumonia you can practice awake ecmo these two has proven a very good awake ecmo results i am telling about patients i put awake uh, patient is uh, not intubated you have put an ecmo or you have extubated within 48 hours of uh, uh, putting ecmo to prevent those uh, vap and uh, to increase the mobilization so these two patients you can without any um, uh, hitch in your thing you can practice awake ecmo if want to go for winning now winning is an art rather than science every patient is different every patient if we look them is different but there is we try to protocolize them as a uh, thing as a protocol so that you know, we can practice it on a regular basis like it is determined obviously the patient lung condition if it improves it easier to winning and winning is typically obviously dependent on what we see we see the trajectory of the lung compliance it is slowly going up it is trajectory of the tidal volume with a Uh, uh pressure given the tidal volume is increasing and with the increasing improving the chest x ray and we know the saturation goes up even you come down on things and we can go down on the flow so this is the way uh, th if you see the x rays the, these are the general pattern of uh, uh the x ray when the x ray improves over a month three techniques we have found is very much beneficial for the weaning thing tracheostomy bronchoscopy and the proning on ecmo these three things we use judicially to prove a very good winning if we want to attend so if we found this kind of x ray is it, we are ready for the winning <coughs> and uh, other things you have to take care of the uh, feeding even on ecmo so this is this is how we do this the patient is taking good oral feed and looking comfortable you can think of winning this is another one spirometry he can do put some volumes uh, uh, expiratory spiral volume this uh, allow him to do some spirometry exercises on ecmo third one is the mobilization his neuromuscular activities so feeding chest spirometry and mobilization to keep all these neuromuscular things which is well discussed in the previous lectures also Th these three things you have to achieve before winning particularly in covid long ecmo winning and obviously this kind of mobilization i have shown yesterday also uh, you have to keep on doing these things and physiotherapy you know it reduces vap it enhances sputum clearance and a, a, a lot of things and you have to be careful that the cannula should not get dislodged and there is no trouble shooting so coming to the winning steps what we follow there are a lot of winning, there are big papers where different carolinasca follows this or few people follows this but there is a general consensus that we come down first on the oxygen that is a pre uh, uh, this is the known as oxygen challenge test what we do come down on your fio2 of your ecmo and 
how you come down every five minute step you come down to 100 to 60 60 to 30 and 21 but we don't come down by five uh, every five minutes we take at some people take to come down on FIO2 by six hours some people take 12 hours looking at the how the patient is tolerating after coming down on 21 percent of your ECMO in your uh, FIO2 of ECMO that is FDO2 you if the patient is still maintaining good saturation, next thing that the most problematic thing is the CO2 clearance. We have seen in a long ECMO run, the first two third requires, first two third uh, of your time requires for your oxygenation to improve. Last one third, they take time to exhale CO2. So next uh, uh, is your, uh, this CO2 uh, challenge test and you come down on your decrease your sweep gas flow by 30% every 5 to 10 minute inter interval but this is also uh, uh, is a very individualistic practice we what we do every 6 to 12 hours we come down on this sweep by 2 liters and keep it lastly we keep it zero and we see we give a trial of period of 24 to 48 hours where the ECMO runs on a flow of 2 to 3 liters or minimum somewhere uh, so, uh, we kept it around 4 liters so that no increase in the uh, uh, anticoagulation doses to, to be done. So we keep it like this and we keep the ECMO off trial off for 2 to 4 uh, 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 1 or 2 days 24 to 48 hours and the patient is doing fine there is no uh, increasing need of uh, uh, decarboxylation on ECMO or uh, there is no appearance of distress, no new uh, lung thing happened, then we go for decannulation. As Murli told me to just control uh, the discuss about the decannulation, uh, so uh, the after the trial of the decannulation happens. So how we do is, this is a classic method, this patients uh, are prepared for decannulations. Uh, you can see the both lines are black. Your uh, the setting which is uh, kept at zero, Blender setting, you have a very good, uh, you have not reduced the flow, it is just a kind of uh, only flow without any oxygenation, decarboxylation going on and your ventilator pattern showing this kind of thing, 17 respiratory rate with a 500 tidal volume with a good saturation and carbon dioxide is maintaining. Now, what we do, how to take out this cannula, just this, we take a part string around the venous cannula. Uh, that is our uh, decarbonization practice, what we use in our uh, uh, hospital. We take a part string around the venous cannula. <clears throat> and it looks like that, you just take the part string and you get ready with the decannulation. Now you uh, take out the cannula like this. Keeping the part string in your hand, you are just taking out the cannula. And tighten the part string. So this is the thing we follow. Some people don't put part string, they take out the cannula and press it for half an hour. We follow this because uh, this uh, shows us uh, minimal uh, compression needed for this thing. So put this thing is fine. So this is our taking out thing. And obviously after taking uh, this successful weaning, uh, I have shown that lady who is on uh, getting this uh, uh, mobilized on the chair. She is like this on the day 15th of April. So with weaning, you have to keep in mind that is only not the weaning of the lungs. It also requires weaning of your musculoskeletal system, weaning of your uh, cerebral uh, system and everything, the as a whole weaning so that after the ECMO run, the ventilator run should be as minimal as possible and your patient goes home without any problem, without an, and they can early uh, come back to their professional practices. So you need a good team for that as a lot of uh, rehabilitation has been uh, discussed previously and I have no interest but only I am interested in ECMO awareness. Thank you.